guys be back. Hopefully the camera don't die again. But as I was saying in the last video, I did not like January's character. Maybe I like it a little bit now, but because I felt like she was selfish and she was rude. But anyway, so now we're going back to the past with Alex. So Alex was kicked out of the house by his grandmother, Helen, at 14. When he was kicked out, he went to go stay with Wayne a little bit. Um, and Wayne was molesting him for food and shelter, right? So now we, we still in the past. So Julie B and Ruby Nell used to be really close. Like they was like this, right? So both of them end up getting pregnant at the same time. At that time, Julie B was like on drugs and whoopie woo, right? And Ruby Nell ended up having a miscarriage. So, she was confiding and Julie B like, oh, she had the miscarriage. Julie B was like, oh, don't worry. I'm going to abort this child. So, Julie B had Alex at this time. Let's remember that. She didn't want any more kids. So, Ruby Nell was like, no, 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 no. Give me the baby. This is going to be good for me. It's sour. whoop de woo We're going to have the baby. Thank you. Like, all of that. So, Julie B agreed to give Ruby Nell the baby. So, they went away well ruby now went away i forgot where she went she came back and she came back with the baby so lydia is not ruby's now biological child julie b is lydia mother another secret <laughs> another secret you can't keep up right so boom so now we're back in the present so everybody decides to pull up to the grandmother's house alex pulled up first then it was um Lydia, then it was Julie B, then it was January. So before January pulled up to the car with the woo, I mean pulled up to the house, Julie B and, and Lydia was having a conversation. Now I will give Julia Julie B this. She did want to tell Lydia where she came from. She did want to tell Lydia that, you know, I'm your mom. But because she made a promise to Ruby Nell to never disclose that secret, she didn't tell Lydia. But Julie B was dropping little hints or whatever, being shady, right? So when January okay. Yeah, so January pulled up to the house. She's seen um, Alex's car, right? So she doesn't get out the car. Her kids get out the car and go to their grandmother, Julie B. So Lydia gets in the car. They talk and whoop de woo. Um, Lydia decides to tell uh, January that I knew that Alex molested you. I saw the whole thing, and I'm so sorry I didn't tell you. And then Lydia turns around and is like, Alex molested me too. So I'm just gonna, I'm just going to disclose that. Right, right now. Alex never molested Lydia. I don't know why Lydia felt the need to lie in that moment, especially playing with January's feelings. I didn't like that because I'm like, like, what are you doing? Like, you trying to emotional trauma connect and that's not the right time is to be lying or something like that. Granted, when she told January this in the book, we didn't know that she lied, but I'm just disclosing that she lied right now because I'm probably going to forget, forget down the line. But anyway, that's another here or there, right? So, that's where their connection grows when January tell, I mean, Lydia tells January that, you know, I did witness Alex molesting you, right? And, um, that's that. So, now we're going back to the past. So, Marie, again, that's Helen's youngest child who was, who had uh, intellectual physical disability, right? So, Marie killed herself shortly after laverne her best friend killed herself so marie slit her wrist laverne hung herself right so helen failed marie marie was a slave she was a servant like helen showed this girl no love she was like the what helen did to this girl is inhumane right yeah she clothed and fed her but the emotional physical neglect and support come on so they used to come at marie and stuff like that right so marie and laverne was best friends so marie ends up killing herself and she was found in the in the bathtub right so that's that so where was i i, I think i forgot to mention something hold on pause one second one second I should mention, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this part. So, prior to all this, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it right now. So, I told y'all how Alex was kicked out of the house, right? 
Alex was kicked out of the house be, um, around the time Laverne died. So one day, Mar uh, Laverne was going to the store. She had asked Marie to go. Um, she had asked if Marie could go. Ruby Nell and Julie B was being an asshole. So Laverne goes to the store, right? She comes back. She gets taken into a house and she gets um, raped and beaten. She goes missing for a few days. She comes back, right? At the same time, Helen was like, Helen, when, when um, Laverne came back, Helen went over to Laverne's house and was like, oh, can you give me a description of the person who raped you? So after Laverne gave the description, Helen's like, oh, that description fits sour, which is Ruby Nail's husband, Lydia's father. So Helen went down to the jail. Let me say the jail. Went down to the police. Sawa got arrested for the rape and, and, and um, physical abuse of Laverne. He got in prison, right? That's when Ruby now lost her mind because she knew her man was innocent, right? So when Alex came to the house, Helen, he pulled up to in front of Helen. Helen automatically knew that Alex is the one who did it. I, we don't know how, but she knew that Alex was the one who did it. So instead of her going to the police and making it right and getting Sawa out the jail, she, Helen says nothing. She banishes Alex from the house, kicks him out, and all she does is slap him in the face, right? Helen had all the time to make things right and stop Patty's and her family. She did not do that, right? So, I'm not going to spoil the other part. So, that's that. So, Helen now knows that Alex is the one who, who, who did that to Laverne. I should also say... Was it Lydia? Lydia is Lydia is also knew that Alex did that to Laverne. She didn't see him, but she just felt his presence when he came back. And when he came back, he had did that to January, right? And on top of that, he had, I believe he touched Marie as well. So when Laverne hung herself, Marie slit her wrist. I'm gonna say that. And now we're still in the past, right? So anyway, let me just make sure the camera's still on. All right, boom. So anyway, we back in the past. So Wayne's ex-wife had pulled up to the house where Helen was at, right? Julie B was there, went in the back. So again, Alex is kicked out of the house. So Wayne's ex-wife tells Helen, you need to go get your grandson from by Wayne's house. Wayne is molesting him. Everybody know what's going on. Julie, when, when the, when the ex-wife left, Julie B, come on, mom, go rescue my son, please, 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 like, you know what's going on, so Helen's like, all right, I'm gonna try to make this right, I'm gonna rescue him, but he can't come back in the house, right, at the same time, Wayne is strung out on drugs, like, his life is going to, to ships, right, so Helen goes to the house, tells Alex to, to go away in the car, I will say, Alex has been fighting for his grandmother's love and, and recognition his whole life from a child to adulthood, right? And he knew despite being kicked out, he was just wanting to be forgiven by his grandmother to embrace him because that's the they they had a connection that they, they loved. Whatever it was, you know, he earned he yearned for that. Earned. He yearned for that. So when Helen came to the house again, he's so excited. So Helen confronts Wayne. Wayne is strung out, whatever. But he realized Helen's in the house. So he tells Helen, like, you know, this monster you think that I am, you created it. You watched your brother rape and molest me. Instead of you helping me, you locked me in a shed. You broke me. You created the monster. You didn't support me. And he was right. Because who's to say Wayne would have turned out like this if Helen would have showed some emotional support? Would have, would have, would have turned bacon into the police, right? Instead, she did nothing, locked him away, said he was the problem, and he followed right in bacon's footsteps, his grandfather's footsteps, right? He became the monster that she made him. And in that moment, I was like, I said, and I'm like, damn, right? So. Helen realized, like, it touched her when she said, when he said that, because he, in that moment, she realized, like, she's the one who broke, she broke her son. All she saw was her father and her son, and that's what she believed, but she didn't realize that, you know, he was innocent. Even though the way he was conceived was disgusting, he was an innocent child, and she could have saved him, but she treated him like a monster. She made him who he is, so she felt guilty about that, right? So... She she realized then like she she saw a a little boy who just wanted love, and she was like she that's that's what she gotta take to her grave now right. So 
she gives Wayne um lace drugs and Wayne dies. That's another secret. She killed Wayne. The secrets just keep coming. I'm not done yet. I'm not done with the secrets, y'all. Just wait on it. We got a couple more pages, right? So anyway, Lydia in January, after they, again, you know, we in the present, they were sitting in the car, they drive to back to January's apartment. So at the apartment, you know, January goes to change. Lydia's sitting there debating, like, she's texting Walter, like, she wants her marriage to work. Like, she wants, she loves Walter, Walter loves her, but she doesn't know how to tell Walter, like, I can't hold babies. I've been new this, you know. I want to be with you, but how can I be with you if I can't fulfill a goal that you have, which is to conceive your children? And it just takes a conversation, you know? It's other options, but back in the time, you know, she's afraid of what, she's afraid of herself. She doesn't know herself. She's afraid Walter will leave her. She kept pushing him away. So she starts crying. The whole time she's crying, you know, January's calling her, asking she wants some Kool-Aid. No, she don't want no Kool-Aid. So January comes out in the living room, realizes Lydia was crying, and Lydia just basically tell her, like, you know, I can't hold children. I've, I've been pregnant. I've had several miscarriages. I also should mention, January thinks that Lydia is rich, that she lives this perfect life, and that's what, and January is a person who assumes, like, she's very assumptionist, right? If even that's, if, if that's even a word, right? But... I'm like, so when Lydia starts breaking down, Jenner's like, like, damn, like, sis really got stuff going on, but she kept asking why she's crying. So that's when Lydia decides to say, like, yo, I just want to let you know, like, yo, um, Alex didn't touch me, right? So Jenner is taking back, like, why would you lie about that? But there is a, a secret that January knows. So Lydia doesn't know that January knows that her father is, is not the one who killed I, let me say kill. It's not the one who raped and beat Lever, right? So, let me make sure I get it right. So then January is wrestling that. She's like, all the secrets is coming out. So January decides to tell Lydia. Wait, hold on. I want to make sure. Hold on. Yeah, January decides to tell Lydia that her dad is not the one who raped Laverne, he didn't do anything. He was innocent. Because the whole time, um, Lydia grew up hating her dad and resenting her dad because they had a good life together. And for her dad to do that, she couldn't uh, phantom the idea that he did that. So she grew up confused and conflicted. And, you know, her mother is not there. She's not right. So when January revealed the truth, it was like relief for her. She wasn't even mad. Both of them wasn't mad. They were just crying and embracing each other because it's like all the secrets is coming together, holding them back. And it's just like they 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 freeing themselves, right? At the same time, here comes Julie B come back to the to the, the apartment with the kids, whatever, whatever. Julie B sees them crying. It's like, oh, what's going on, right? So Julie B decides to be Julie again. Julie B is watching them embrace and crying. She knows what's going on, but she refuses to say anything. And Julie B still acting like she don't know why um, January doesn't want Alex around the kids. So Julie B also is c having conflictions, right? She wants to tell the truth. She wants to free her soul, but she she's afraid that if she frees her soul, they are going to resent and hate her. So every time she gets the courage to say something, she holds back and she'd be like, "Forget it." And they was so she did that in that scene, and they was looking at her like, "So you gonna finish or not or whatever?" So she'll just turn around, and start crying. So I'm like, "I don't got time for Julie B. You see everybody sharing secrets and other stuff, and you not saying nothing still." But I understand why she, Julie B, from a social work standpoint, why she won't say anything. But at the end of the day, if you really want to free your soul, they really say the truth is will set you free, right? So anyway, at this, so anyway, that's that. So when J January Lydia pulled off, Alex was standing at the window of the grandmother's house. This is the first time he's been able to go back into the house because his grandmother's in the hospital dying, right? So Alex is in the house with his grandfather, right? So Alex watches um, Julie B. I mean, him say Julie B. Jan yeah, Julie B. January and Lydia, they all pulled off, right? So this is the part that got me tight with the grandfather. But I like the grandfather's character. I liked and disliked the grandfather's character. So Homer is the grandfather's name, right? Homer helped raise the kids. He he married 
Helen, all that. But he knows all the family secret. But again, he's another person that see everything and don't say anything, right? So he knew what Alex did. He said, he tells Alex, because he see Alex looking at the window. He's like, yo, come over here, sit sit next to me. I don't care what you have done. I, I, I'm not judging you. My, you should judge him. You should. What are you talking about? That's the problem with family. They see some, and that's when, like, when, when family members are raping other family members, especially the children, and they keep it in the house, and, and they wonder why children grow so traumatic and why they have the life that they have because nobody says anything. Who's protecting these kids? You going to sit here and tell Alex, I don't care what you did. I'm not judging you over that. You should care. That's the problem. You don't care. And in the same breath, he telling Alex, you know, you know what you got to do to free yourself. What you mean? Anyways, that's nothing here or there, right? So let me fast forward, right? So Alex is reflect, at the same time, Alex is reflecting on what he did to Laverne. It's very graphic. He reflects on how he, he was, he was in, in, enticed and, and aroused by her, uh, Laverne's fear of of him, that the fear kept him going, and he when he I don't even want to get gra graphic details, but he 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 felt no remorse when he raped and beat her, right? And he's trying to control his urges, right? So I'm just like yo, that scene disgusted me. I'm not going to rehash that, right? Again, so uh, while Alex is thinking about that, talk to his grandfather. Everyone gets a call from the hospital, right? Everybody gets a call from the hospital. So the grandfather gets the call. It's like, yo, drive me to the hospital. So him and him and his and homeboys drive it to the hospital, get to the hospital. Alex is like, what if she don't want to see me? So nobody told Alex that sis is gone. Like, she not, she's not physically gone as far as, like, she's not dead yet, but her brain gone, like, no function. She's just breathing. Like, she's just been gone, right? So he's still thinking, like, she's in the hospital. She's away. Woo -dee -woo. So Alex is still holding on to this hope that he will speak to his grandmother she will forgive him. They will forgive each other, right? So when they get outside the hospital, they walk in, in front of the hospital door. Alex is like, how, how do I fix this? How do I make this right? So the grandfather stops and tells Alex, this family has too many secrets, and the secrets is what's killing the family, right? He slaps fire out of Alex. Fire, right? out of Alex and tells Alex, you need to make this right. And Alex is taken back because he's never seen his grandfather so angry, right? And my thing, the grandfather got the nerve to say this family got so many secrets. You holding the secrets, brother. You holding the secrets too. You need to slap yourself. That's not a hell there. Anyways, Alex gets to the grandmother's room. She sees, he sees her laying down like she looks like she's dead, right? Anyways, God don't like ugly. So, he whispers in his grandmother ear, like, Wayne touched me, molested me, right? He, 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 he's telling his, his story, and you can see in the corner of the grandmother's eyes, like, it's crying, he's crying, whoop de -woo, right? And Alex says, you know, Wayne broke me. Wayne broke me, so I broke the girls. So basically because he was raped by Wayne and molested by Wayne, he did that to the girls because it's a cycle, right? No one was there to help him just like no one was there to help Wayne, just like no one there was there to help Bacon and Helen, a generational family thing. So there he kind of gets a little a little free on his, on his end, right? So we're going back to the past. So... In the past, Helen um, was, when Helen was diagnosed with dementia, um, she, she, there was, she got, she went to the doctor, she was diagnosed with dementia, she's in the car riding with Homer, she tells Homer basically everything that happened to her family, to her, whoop de woo and she tells Homer like everything that happened moving forward from bacon to now is her fault. And it is. She never spoke up. She never helped Wayne. She never helped Alex. She never helped her daughter. She never she overheard things in the house. She never said anything. And it is her fault. I'm not gonna I'm I'm also not gonna place all the blame on her. I'm gonna place all the blame on the people who did the vic the the um the abuse as well. At the end of the day there's no excuse. 
right? But I understand her people, her people. There's so much that go into it. I'm not going to place all the blame on her, but she had the ability to stop it where it was at when it came to Wayne. And she did not do that. But also, she did not receive help herself. She did not um, take time to heal. She just suppressed everything that she went she went through and moved forward through life. And we all know if you suppress things, they, they tend to rise. So she hurt people because she was hurt herself. So nobody in this family had the tools, right? So there's that. Anyways... So, she, the reason why she says her fault, because she didn't speak up for Bacon and Wayne, like I said. Um, she didn't love Marie. She knew Marie had disability. She didn't love Marie. Um, and she, she wanted Marie alive. And when Marie killed herself, you know, she was broken. She didn't say anything, right? Um, she didn't free Sawa when she had the chance, when she found out that Alex is the one who did the crime against Laverne. She didn't do that. And because of that, Ruby now lost her mind. Had she done that, Ruby Nell would probably, mentally, Ruby Nell would have been a, a better person. She didn't free Julie B from herself. She didn't, um, what else did she do? She thought locking Wayne and Alex in the in outhouse and Wooty Woo was helping them. She didn't, she didn't do, she took no action, right? Yeah, she beat Bacon, right? Yeah, she kicked Alex out, but that just created, that just created the born the monster, so... She 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 was at fault. Again, I'm not putting all the blame on her, but she she had the ability to stop it. She could have been different, right? So though after a while, you know, dementia started take on setting, and um, the, her sorry, dementia her symptoms started on setting, and Helen decided that she was gonna start playing. Like she was forgetting stuff, but she she it was a point in time like she would just play like she was forgetting stuff like like so for example. She would just act like dumbfounded, like lost, right? And while she's acting lost, she's taking in everything around her. And, you know, at this point, she's just like, yo, like, if I act lost, I can see everything and people just going to start feeling sympathy for her and not sympathy for themselves, right? At one point, Julie B was like, all right, she looked at Helen and she thought Helen was lost, but Helen was fully aware. So... Julie, Julie B had dr drove Helen over to Alex's house, and that was the first time Alex got to see his grandmother, but Julie B had to tell Alex, like, she's lost, not knowing that uh, Helen is fully aware, because she liked to do it because she thought this was a game. Helen played too much games, in my opinion. That's why I don't like her character. So, Alex starts, you know, she starts looking at Alex, and she, she loves Alex so much. Despite everything that Alex did, she loves Alex. And she wanted to tell Alex, like, you know, I hear everything that you're saying to me. I love you. But she wanted to play lost because she realized, like, Alex will always be the mon a monster. And his actions doesn't do anything. But she really loved, she really loved Alex, right? Now we, but that that's the past. So now we in the present. It's only a couple pages. Oh, we got one more page, y'all. So, we coming to the end. So now, like I said, everybody gets a call to come to the hospital, right? Alex and his grandfather get there first. They sit and chilling in the room. It's like a big room. It's a curtain that's pulled right there, right? And so they over by the grandmother. January and Lydia pulls up to the hospital, right? That's when January... Sorry, I'm lying. Before January and Lydia got there... Yeah, before January, sorry, I have to remember. Before January and Lydia got there, um, Julie B and the kids was already there, right? They had left the apartment and they beat January and Lydia there. So when January and Lydia put up to the hospital, they in the room, whatever, they see Alex, Julie B, and Alex talking to the kids. So January's like, yo, y'all get over here right now. Get over here right now. So, Julie B's like, oh, you know that ain't right. I want to, if I was in the bum, I'm like, yo, shut up. Like, that's what Generation should have told her mom. Shut up. So, January goes to Alex in front of Alex. This is the first time they've seen each other, right? And she tells Alex, I'm not scared of you anymore. You're sick. You're disgusted. So, Alex is like, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can make it right. I can fix it. I can fix it. So, January like, fix it. Fix it. You sick. So here come Julie B. Oh, that's not right. That's not right, right? So she really, she, she really pissed me off. I'm not going to tell you. I'm telling you. So Alex excuses himself. He goes to the bathroom, right? 
So Julie B's feeling the type of way that January did that, right? So in the midst of everything going on, granddaddy started yelling, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm like, yo, shut up. What you talking about? Stop. You shut up. You shut up. That's how I'm saying. When I'm, that's what I'm thinking when I'm reading the book, right? So granddaddy yells for everybody to get out the room, right? So Lydia didn't know that granddaddy was there because he was hot. He was hiding behind the little curtain thing, right? As I said. So he was tucked away. So Lydia goes to see her grandmother again. That's not the first time she's seen the grandma, but she goes, Granddaddy, you there? So granddaddy's like, you know, yeah, I'm here, whoopty woo, right? So she goes over to him, they talking. I'm a fast forward. Um, he tells Lydia, like, yo, they at, in the conversation, he tells Lydia, like, Ruby Nell's not your mother, Julie B is. So the she, that secret was revealed to Lydia from the grandfather. So now Lydia's thinking back, like, she's not mad. She's just like, now I understand where I come from. And it's kind of uh, setting her free in that, in that moment, right? And then he tells her that Helen was raped by her father. So granddaddy's just telling all, most of the, some of the secrets to Lydia. So Lydia is putting calculate everything in her head like, oh, th this is, this is, this is why we are the way that we are. So Lydia, um, decides that, you know, she does in that moment when he's revealing all the secrets, Lydia decides that she doesn't want to be like her mother. She doesn't want to be like her aunt. She wants to make her marriage work. She wants to tell Walter everything. She At one point, she had text Walter like, we need to talk. I'm coming home. Cause, no, we need to talk. Walter responded, come home. Lydia texting back, I'm coming home. So in that moment, she realized she was doing stuff to make other people happy and not herself. She never wanted kids. She only wanted the kids off her stream because she loved Walter. And in that moment, Lydia found herself. She, she got her identity, well, some of her identity and you know, she was free, and granddaddy told Lydia, go to your man, basically, go to your family, and never come back to this town. There's nothing here for you, right? And I was like, yes, Lydia, yes. So, anyways, now we're going to fast forward, right? So, I should mention, during the whole argument thing, because everything, everything happened at once, so I'm breaking it up in pieces, right? During the whole argument, um... I mean, the whole conversation with Granddaddy and Lydia, Alex is still in the bathroom. While they talking, there's a loud bang. Bang! A lot of than that. Right? So everybody rush. Uh, January and the kids run back in. Granddaddy and freaking Lydia go to the bathroom door. They open it. Alex is sitting on the toilet with blood. The man shot his penis off. <laughs> and then he, tapped, he told the nurse that he didn't want to do anything to rectify the situation. Julie B's like, oh my God, my man. My, oh my man. My son shot his penis. He, she started laughing hysteria. January was like, I can't take this anymore. I got to go. So January dips out the hospital with her kids. While she's in the car, January was like, you know, because I told you she was contemplating moving and everything, right? So January in that in the car when she left the hospital with her kids, she made the decision. She's like, you know what? I don't need my grandmother's money to to move. I've been struggling. I got Section 8 voucher. I can move. I can make it happen. I'm going to give my kids a better life. We move into Tennessee. And I was so happy for her because like, yes, break the cycle. Leave just like Lydia did. So I was happy for her character, for her kids. She looked at her kids and she realized it was going to be all right. God got her back, right? So, boom. Hold on. And I should mention, Alex flushed his penis down the toilet. <laughs> I think that was a funny thing for me, right? So anyway, oh, I forgot to mention a, a important part. All right, well, no, we we're still in the same breath. So while the whole chaos is going on with Alex and he's still in the battle, everybody's trying to help him, right? Lydia goes back. The grandfather had left the scene after he seen that Alex was sitting on the toilet. He went back to where the grandmother was, right? Lid so this is the this is the grandmother, right? This is the grandma. I'm about to demonstrate for you. Hold on. So this, ooh, this is the grandmother. So the curtain right here, the grandfather is sitting on the bed like this. So the grandma, so you can't really see the grandmother. You can only see the grandfather, right? So Lydia comes around. So she comes around. She only see like him, him looking over the grandmother. Once she get closer, 
This is the pillow. He got the pillow suffocating Helen. <laughs> what? He killed Helen. Yo, Lydia looked and was like, oh, nah, I got you to go. So the grandpa was like, I thought I told you not to come over here. I'm like, what? So another secret, 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 secret. So Homer killed Helen. I mean, you know, that's that, right? And then... So everybody, Lydia leaves, January and the kids left, Alex is in the hospital, Granny's still there waiting for, you know, they, nobody knows that a Helen is dead yet, She they still think that she like that, whatever, the things didn't go, ding, 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 right? So the only two really left that's there is Granddaddy and Julie B. So Granddaddy tells Julie B, like, the only way to really set yourself free is that you need to go to your kids and tell your kids that you you knew everything, um to 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 help you and to heal julie was like i don't know if i could do that they're gonna hate me granddad was like it's the only way and then she's like you know i'll think about it and she been spending the, she spent the money she and the only secret that was not revealed is the money right Ju, uh julie b never said anything about the money that's the one secret that stayed hidden and, um, so yeah, Julie B decided, you know, she has spent the money on like a, a car and some clothes. And at one point, I think, um, Jen, Jen Ray suspected that she found the money, but it was never confirmed nor denied. And the story ends. So yeah, it's a book of secrets, trauma, generational curses, generational trauma. The, the list goes on. Um, and that's the book. So yeah, if you read the book, again, drop it in the comments. Um, the next book I'm going to do is The Two Lives of Sarah. And then we're going to do the other the other book that was picked by, is Blessings by Beverly Watkins. I forgot who, who chose that book. But again, shout out to you for picking that book. You already know who you are. Shout out to you, well, not The Two Lives, for picking uh, Paris. Shout out to you. It was a very triggering book. Um, heavy read, but I got through it. It took me a while. But anyways, your girl is back, and I'll see y'all next video.